Benchmade 522 Presidio Ultra, part of Benchmade's black class of knives, is often marketed as a more affordable version of the 520, which is a similar designed Mel Pardue tactical folding knife. But is this series of knives really a tactical knife? Is it really meant for the speed and strength of a fighting knife? In this review, I'm going to give some real talk about the design and kind of give my perspective. I really don't think it's for that reason. I want to give a special shout out to the Knives, Guns, and Gear channel, which I've linked below. I won this knife in a raffle, and it's provided a lot of interesting food for thought since I've received it. And I'll be sharing that with you today. Let's talk blade profile and grind, because to me, I really think this defines the knife in the most fundamental way. Now, in spite of being in a tactical line of knives and a pretty intense looking handle, we are basically looking at a traditional draw point, which is a hunting knife style, as you know, probably made popular thanks especially to Bob Loveless in the mid-20th century. Now, the way that a uh, draw point like this works is you've got a slow convex drop to the point probably at about 50% in this blade that is going to add control on the tip and it's a very versatile blade because it enables you to uh, still retain a lot of belly and spine strength but have a significant primary grind so that you can get a uh, slicing ability in thanks to the concave edge that you're putting on it. Talking the grind, you've got a concave primary grind as well as a small secondary grind as well. And so it isn't really true to say that this is a true hollow grind the way a straight razor is a true hollow grind, but it does yield a fine cutting edge compared to other folding knives. So again, in spite of the strong spine, I think that there's lots of evidence that this knife primarily is meant for fine cutting tasks. Not merely skinning or something, but uh, real world field fine cutting tasks. Of course, for the locking mechanism, you've got the ubiquitous axis lock. And the way that this works is a cylindrical bearing, which is tensioned by two omega shaped springs that, while riding in a handle slot in the steel liners, they engage a ramped tang when the knife is fully opened. So the tang is wedged between the stop pin and the axis bearing. Everyone likes the axis lock. It's proven. It's very convenient to use being ambidextrous and being able to fully disengage the knife means that you can open and close it extremely easily. The knife beyond this actually kind of walks and talks as I'm showing you just as a result of the engagement of the spring mechanisms of the axis lock and that's really pretty neat. So you've got something very solid altogether without being uh, unnecessarily overbuilt or difficult to operate as a result of being overbuilt the way that, for example, some people feel the triad lock is. You can talk about the Norrell GTX handle. This is a engineered plastic that Benchmade does distinguish from Zytel as being just a molded to form plastic. Uh, a high strength plastic, but not one that's necessarily glass filled. And so it's a very affordable material to manufacture, I imagine. And altogether, all of the texturing is from the diamond plating three-dimensional texturing in the handle. Benchmade calls it EDM, which I assume means external diamond milling, but I'm not exactly sure about that. It does provide a nice grip, if not a little bit vague. Overall, you have some jimping, of course, but the jimping is very minimal. Um, the idea, I think, is just an overall high friction level with the shape of the handle so that when you're holding it in a variety of positions, you're going to get roughly the same overall sense of where the knife is. So again, if you switch it around, you're going to find that it's relatively comfortable in any number of positions without being extraordinarily comfortable in any one. You know, it really doesn't have a very good finger twirl there. I feel like my front finger is a little cramped. 
And I just uh, wish the ergonomics were maybe a little bit more decisive. It's a little vague. The Adama style clip on this 522 is a welcome modification. And it frankly is very practical for me because it's always the width and length of a knife that's drawing attention to it in my office environment. And even though I think it's very unfair, being able to seat the knife deeply in my pocket and more securely just draws less attention. That's been my consistent experience, and that's the reason why I like low riding clips. I did forget to mention the milled liners, which is another reason why this knife is relatively light for its overall size and girth. Of course, the 440 steel used in this blade is practically a tale as old as time as far as folding knives are concerned. I think that it's just a cheap knife for Benchmade to manufacture, heat treat, and then on the user end, it's very easy to resharpen. Bottom line, this is a user's knife for someone who probably really isn't that into knives. It's very vague and very useful and not really remarkable. And so this is a great knife for someone to buy if they're not into knives and they just want a knife that's going to kind of be able to do everything. If that kind of person was looking for a, a general hard-use knife, they could look more towards the cold steels. And if they wanted something more refined, they could go and look at a Spyderco or a higher-end Benchmade, such as the Rift or the Barrage. This is really just a knife for someone who wants Benchmade's quality at an affordable price point and maybe doesn't have the most specific ideas of what they're hoping or expecting out of a knife. That isn't to say that this knife does what it does poorly, it just isn't very memorable. Thanks very much for watching and please consider subscribing if you enjoyed this video.